Hi, we're out on the range today, so bear with me if you hear some gunfire in the background. You may have seen these three rifles before. Today, same guns, different subject. 22 auto-loading rifles come in more shapes and sizes than you could ever imagine. But over the last 30 years or so, there's been three that have probably been the most popular. The Marlin Model 60, the Remington Nylon 66, and the Ruger 1022. Now, all three of these are 22 long rifle auto loaders, but they're all very different from each other, and there's a lot of debate over which one is the best. Which one is the best is probably more a matter of opinion than quality of the rifle. But let's put these three through their paces and see if we can shed some light on that argument. First, we'll start out with a little bit about how these rifles work. We'll start with the Model 60. It's got a conventional tube magazine under the barrel. To load it, you take a tube out and you just load the rounds into this cartridge-shaped loading gate under the barrel. Now that being cartridge-shaped is a real plus. It keeps you from putting the rounds in backwards. It's a 15-shot tube, and you know when it's full because you can see the top round right in there. And you put your tube back in. Well, already you can see a little bit of a concern in that I'm working up here in front of the muzzle of a loaded rifle. Now there's no round in the chamber yet, but if you were top off loading in the field, there would be. Put a round in the chamber, Safety's behind the trigger guard, just like that. Now the real trick of this rifle is when it comes to unloading it. You've got a round in the chamber and a tube full of rounds. If you try to take the round out before you empty the tube, it creates a real hassle. It can be done, but it's really difficult. So to unload it, you can just dump these rounds out onto the ground, or if you want to keep them, dump them into your hand, and you can see I'm now pointing a loaded rifle at my hand. There's a concern there. Then, of course, you take the round out of the chamber, and you're just fine. Except that you're not. Even though I've dumped that tube and taken the round out of the chamber, there is still one that stays in loading position. Obviously, you should always look to make sure your chamber is empty. But this particular rifle, if you get a little bit careless, it will tell on you. That is a design feature that I do not like about this rifle. Now let's take a look at the Nylon 66. It's also a tube-fed autoloader, but the way it works is very different. The tube is in the stock of the rifle. Now it's a 14-shot tube, and it has the disadvantage of no bullet-shaped uh, loading gate, so you have to make sure you put them in forward. It also doesn't have any indicator of when you have loaded it completely. You just have to be able to count 14. Well, that's easy enough to do, but when you're in the field and you're top off loading, shoot a few, add a few, you're forever getting too many in there, and your tube doesn't go in all the way, and you have to dump some out, and it's kind of a hassle. Put around in the chamber just like so. The safety is mounted right here. It's a tang mounted safety. You work it with your thumb. This is just a little different. The real advantage is if you're a lefty, it's easy to work with your left hand. The way this rifle feeds is different from the Marlin, and I'm not going to stand here and shoot the thousand rounds it would take to demonstrate this, but the Nylon 66 is just a more reliable design. The Marlin is good, but this one is just a little more reliable. The real advantage this rifle has is when it goes to unloading. Take your tube out, dump the rounds in your hand, and I'll hit it like that to make sure that last one falls out. And I can do that without having to point it at myself. And then, of course, take the one out of the chamber. Yes, you should always look and make sure. But this doesn't have the extra round stuck in there that's going to tell on you when you get careless. This rifle's loading and feeding design is just a safer, superior one to the Marlin. The Ruger 1022. Now what really sets it apart from the other two is the detachable box magazine. It makes loading and unloading a lot faster and easier. Your safety's right here in front of the trigger guard. The big thing about the detachable box magazine is when you unload, you're not dealing with loose rounds. That's a real plus when you're going hunting and you're getting in and out of the vehicle. It just makes loading and unloading a lot easier. Another time it's a big plus is when it's January and you're jackrabbit hunting and you're not having to deal with loose rounds when it's five degrees and you got really cold hands. 
The disadvantage of the 1022 is it's only a 10-shot magazine, not a 14 or a 15 like the Remington or the Marlin. And it only comes with one 10-shot magazine. Now, people, as soon as I say that, people will always say, but you could buy these aftermarket mags. Yes, you can. You can buy 25, 30, even 50 shot aftermarket magazines for this rifle. The downside is that they cost 25, 30, even $50. Now, just last week I checked, and at my local gun store, the Marlin was 170, and this Ruger is 220. So you're already dealing with a rifle that's quite a bit more expensive. And by the time you start adding these, they are a plus. I mean, they hold a lot of rounds, they're easy to load and unload. But by the time you start adding those, that turns into a lot more money. Advantage, disadvantage. Accuracy is a big part of the debate over which one of these is the best rifle. So I've got three different targets, labeled them with which rifle we'll use. I'll go back 25 yards, shoot five shots at each of these targets. We'll see if there's a difference in accuracy. Well, how'd we do? The Marlin, quite well. The Remington, not near as well. And the Ruger, pretty similar to the results of the Marlin. So, does this mean that any one of those rifles is more accurate than the others? You know, not really. The meaning of accuracy is how consistent that barrel is with that ammunition to put rounds in the same place. The whole process is wrought with inconsistencies, most of which lie in the shooter. This is not necessarily a test of the rifle near as much as it's a test of how accurately I can shoot that rifle offhand at 25 yards. Because this is better than this does not mean the rifle works better, it means that this rifle works better for me. Now let me show you those rifles again and see if I can explain what I mean. Okay, the Marlin. That's probably the one I held the best group with. A lot of people say the Marlin is the most accurate, and they'll cite reasons like it's thicker, heavier barrel, and it's microgroove rifling. Microgroove rifling is something some Marlin rifles have, and it basically means it has 12 lands and grooves instead of 6 like most other rifles have. Does that make it more accurate? You know, maybe. But in terms of shooting offhand with an off-the-shelf rifle with off-the-shelf ammunition, that isn't going to make enough difference that you'll ever see it. The reason the Marlin can be shot more accurately by some people lies primarily in that it's a heavy rifle, which some people can shoot more accurately. Now this one has a 15-shot magazine. The old-school Marlins were actually quite a bit longer than this and had 18-shot magazines. Now, the longer barrel doesn't really make the bullet fly any straighter. The real difference lies in the sighting plane. With the longer barrel, you have a greater distance between your rear sight and the front sight, which means that some people can shoot rifles like that more accurately, especially older people who, whose vision is starting to fail a little bit. So the biggest advantage of the Marlin is that it's a long, heavy, man-sized gun. However, the biggest disadvantage of the Marlin is that it's a long, heavy, man-sized gun. You take a rifle like this and try to hand it to a 10-year-old when you're trying to teach him how to shoot, and he starts doing this kind of thing with it. So, what makes it the best, in some ways, makes it the worst. Now, by contrast, the Remington, with its polymer stock, is very light. And this works great for backpackers and things like that, but a lot of people cannot shoot a light rifle nearly as accurately. Also, the Remington has very big, very square, very high visibility sights, which again, for a lot of people, helps a lot. I don't like the sights on this at all, and that's reflected on the target. Now, maybe I don't like them because I can't shoot as well with them. Maybe I can't shoot as well with them because I don't like them. I don't know. The Ruger 1022, by contrast, has very small, very fine sights, and it's got this little brass bead. Well, I've found that when trying to hunt small game like rabbits and squirrels, especially when they're moving,
that allows me to get a sight picture a lot faster. And you can see my results with the Ruger just about as good as the results with the Marlin. Even though the Ruger is the one that is most often criticized as being the least accurate. But what makes this rifle more accurate for me is that I like the sights and I like the way it fits me. So the bottom line in terms of accuracy is that it's not so much which gun is the best as which gun is the best for you based on the way your eyes see the sights and the way the rifle fits you. Another thing I'd like to say about the 1022 is that compared to the other rifles it's very versatile. You can buy a lot of different models of 1022. Synthetic stock, wooden stock, stainless steel, blued steel. There's also a vast array of aftermarket parts you can put on these. Flash suppressors, folding stocks, rail systems, just about anything you could ever want you can put on a 1022. Now you notice I don't have any of those on mine, such things aren't really my bag, but even this one is the takedown model. So if you needed to carry it in a gym bag, a backpack, or in your motorcycle, saddlebags, you can. Now, does all that stuff make the 1022 a better rifle? It just makes it a far more versatile rifle that can be more customized to fit your needs. So did we really shed any light on which one of these rifles is the best? You know, very little. Is the debate over which one of these rifles is the best going to end just by virtue of what I said today? Probably not, but I think we can all agree that 22 rifles are fun. I don't think there's any debate over the fun of 22 rifles. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the 22 comparison video.